Cheers, and thank you for joining us on this Wednesday's YouTube Live. As you can probably tell, Sean is not in the office. He's not doing the live this week. What Sean is actually doing is he is over in Florida, in Panama City specifically, and he is helping with the relief efforts back there. Uh, what he is doing over there is he's taking the profits from his training uh, and profits that do or uh, donations that you guys may have made to us, not the profits, the donations that you guys have uh, given to the Trader on the Street uh, GoFundMe page. And he is buying supplies. He's buying diapers for those who can't get to the store to buy diapers for their baby. He filled up a bunch of gas canisters with gas to help people with. Uh, he's chopping down trees. He's doing a lot of stuff over there. He's doing whatever he can to help. Uh, he went over there with a few other people from the office along with his kids. And uh, part of going over there with this is he took some of our recording equipment too. So I cannot see the questions that you guys are typing live, but we do have someone upstairs who will be going and answering those uh, questions as you go ahead and type those. So feel free to type in the questions. And uh, we do have someone up there who is going and answering those. Back to what Sean is doing though. Uh, he actually sent us a video from Florida showing us what the relief efforts are doing there and what he's doing for everyone. Uh, so real quick, before we get too much into the live and going on the ADX indicator, which we'll be talking about today, uh, here's the video that Sean had sent us from over in Florida. Hi Trader, Sean Lucas here. Uh, just wanted to touch base with you. Last week, uh, as many of you know, I was trading for the relief eff efforts uh, in the panhandle of Florida that was, uh, that was struck by Hurricane Michael. Uh, this week, I'm actually here in Florida, uh, rolling up my sleeves and, and uh, helping out the folks uh, who have been uh, displaced and, and left in a, in a really rough spot. I, as I kind of, you know, drove around the Panama City today, I was really just taken back by the sheer devastation. Uh, you've got roofs that have flown off buildings and wrapped themselves around trees and you've got fallen trees all over the place. You know, everywhere you look there are tarps um, on top of the people's houses and everything like that. You know, we've been, we've been going around uh, door to door and uh, asking folks if we can help or, you know, what, what, what can we do to help them out. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really been impressed with some of the responses that uh, folks are given. You know, we're fine, but my neighbor over here is, is, uh, is not doing so well and, and wondering if you could, you know, if you had any gas to spare, they would really appreciate it. The people have just been champions out here. I've, I've been really impressed by their spirit. You know, they've just, they've just been hit by this enormous hurricane and, and yet they're out there, you know, helping each other out. I think sometimes you see on the news all of the negative that comes out of this, but, you know, as we've been going around door to door, you know, I've just really been impressed with the, uh, the spirit of the good people here and, and uh, the effort that they're putting in to helping re re rebuild their city. Anyway, just wanted to touch base. We're gonna, we'll be back out there tomorrow and, and uh, see what good we can do and see if we can put this, uh, these funds that we, that we earned last week, if we can put them to good use. And, and by the way, if you find it in your heart or if you have a, something to donate to the relief efforts here, that'll, that'll help. Uh, it goes a long ways. So thank you everybody and happy trading. As you can see, he's doing a lot of stuff. Flew out there on Saturday, uh, rented a truck, rented a U-Haul, and he's just been filling all that stuff up with whatever supplies he thinks people need, going, delivering them. Uh, and if he's coming across people that need more, he's going and getting those too. So uh, if you're still interested, we are still, or Sean is still, he's still there today. Uh, I believe he's flying back this evening and will be uh, with whatever he does not use in the relief efforts over there uh, fiscally. Uh, he'll be separating into donations for separate uh, separate charities and things like that who will be helping in Florida. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing how that's going, you can go to traderonthestreet.com slash give back uh, and you can sort of see how much we've raised, what Sean did trading wise, uh, and we'll probably be putting up pictures and videos as well from all of the efforts that Sean's been doing over there. Um, so thank you guys for watching that video. Uh, but now let's get into the ADX indicator. 
Uh, ADX is average directional trend or the average directional strength index. And so what it really does is it's split up into three different indicators sort of within itself. Uh, there's the ADX, there's a plus DI, and a minus DI. And so what these are, your plus DI, minus DI, uh, is the strength of the trends going in the specific direction. How strong is that bullish trend? How strong is that bearish trend? Aside from those two, there's the ADX itself. The ADX is sort of letting you know the overall trends, the overall strength that's going through the, uh, through the charts and through the platform. And so if we, we cut, to, cut to the iPad here, which I have, uh, we'll sort of look at the equations for those. So we're talking about the ADX, oops, ADX. And so the first thing you need to know for the ADX is what the plus directional movement and the minus directional movement are. And so what these different movements are is it the plus directional movement, that's your bullish trend, that takes your, your high minus previous high, previous candle high, candle high, and then the minus DM or the minus directional movement takes your low minus the previous candle's low. And, uh, and that's pretty much all that those, those do calculation-wise. Um, however, the plus directional movement and minus directional movement won't ever be less than zero. And so for these movements, if your plus DM is greater than your minus DM and it is greater than zero, then the plus DM equals just the value calculated above equals that value right there. Uh, minus DM, same thing. Your minus directional movement, if that is greater than your plus DM and it is greater than zero, it equals the value calculated. That value calculated is that value right there. Uh, if the plus DM is less than the minus DM or less than zero based off the calculation, then we just use a zero value for the positive directional movement. Uh, same for the minus directional movement. If it's less than zero or it's less than the positive directional movement, we're not going in that bearish direction since we have the higher positive direction. Uh, and then we'll just go ahead and uh, set that one to zero as well. Once we have those positive and minus directional movements, if I go rewrite ADX here, uh, then we have what's called the plus DI and the minus DI. Uh, and actually, let's go ahead and put the minus DI a little lower so we have more room to write here. So what these are, this is your positive directional index and your minus directional index. So your bullish and bearish movements as a whole. And so what these are is this takes 100 and multiplies that 100 times the, the EMA of the plus DM and that that uh, EMA the period is whatever you have the period of the ADX set to uh, and so for Alveo it defaults to 10 and that's what when we pull up Alveo that's what we'll be looking at is just that period of 10 um, and then it takes that and it divides by the ADX so 100 times all of that right there and so you can't see that X that well uh, minus DI very similar to how the minus DM was. Uh, it's just the, the opposite there. So it's 100 times the, let's see if I can write a little bit smaller here so we have all the room we need. EMA of the minus DM divided by the, I'm, I said ADX up here. I'm sorry, I didn't mean ADX. Now that I'm writing it down here, I'm in ATR. We take the average true range of the um, average true range of the equation there. And so that's how we find those plus and minus DIs, not ADX, ATR. I apologize for that mix up right there. Um, so that's, that's the plus DI and minus DI. And once again, those are the specific direction. How, how bullish is the market going? How bearish is the market going? Uh, how strong is that trend? Uh, last sort of equation, the one that the indicator is eponymously named for, is the ADX itself. And so the ADX is you have 100 times an EMA 
and I believe, let's see, it is the absolute value of the plus di. My absolute value sign's a little lacking there. Minus the minus di divided by the plus di minus the minus di. And so uh, the reason we're taking that absolute value of that top number is so that way we don't have a negative on the top and bottom of that division sign because those two negatives are going to cancel each other out. It's going to be positive. Uh, so by taking that absolute value of those above two, we're making it uh, so that if we are in a downward trend, uh, you know, we are, we are expressing that, that negativity there. And so let's go ahead. We'll, we'll close out of these equations. Now that you have a rough idea of how it's calculated, we can switch over to Alveo here. We'll go ahead and put that ADX on. As you can see here, period defaults to 10, which is that EMA period that it's using in the calculation. Uh, we'll just leave that right there for now while we look at uh, some of the entries and exits and everything. Uh, price type, price close, where it is typically looked at on the, on the price. And so here we go. We have the ADX on our chart here. Uh, I have it set to the Pound New Zealand. Pound New Zealand is uh, personally one of my favorite pairs for uh, different momentum indicators, things like that, because it has these moments where it just shoots in a specific direction really fast. So it makes it great to visualize these momentum indicators. Um, but let's go ahead. We start looking at our ADX here. As you can see, we have those three lines, the ADX line right here in blue. That is our the EMA, the absolute value of the plus DI minus the minus DI uh, divided by the plus DI minus the um, plus DI minus the minus DI uh, multiplied by that 100 there. And so this is just letting us know the overall trend. So if we grab our crosshair up here, it makes it really easy to visualize on the chart where exactly my mouse is on the indicator. So right here we have our ADX starts going up in this positive direction. It's growing in its strength, increasing on the indicator scale. That's showing us that we have that increasing trend right here. While the trend is bullish, it will also do the same thing for bearish. So right here, as it starts heading up, we start increasing on that bearish trend. For this, we're growing in strength right here along that bearish trend. Um, we lose all that bearish strength with this large bullish candle right here, which is where we get that drop down in the, in the ADX indicator itself. And so that's just letting us know, is the overall strength increasing or decreasing? Now, which strength, or I'm sorry, which, uh, which trend, which direction is the trend going? What's the dominant trend? What is the ADX showing us? That, we just fall a little bit below that ADX line, and we have our plus DI right here and our minus DI right here. Uh, sometimes you'll hear positive and negative DI uh, instead of plus and minus. Uh, when I first learned ADX, I learned it as positive and negative. Uh, so you, you may hear me sort of slip up a little bit and say positive and negative. Uh, but I try to say plus and minus because that's what Alveo and Aviary Fund have them set to. And so uh, here we have our plus DI, positive DI going up, increasing. And it starts to decrease a little bit here, increase again, decrease, increase. As you see these DIs, they're a lot more receptive to the price movement than the ADX. So right here, we're going on this bullish trend. Overall, looking at the ADX, trend is constantly going up. So right around here, let's actually draw... Let's draw a line in there so we can notate to ourselves where the trend is that is going and finishing up. So switching back to our crosshair. Trend starts right around here. And I already switched from the line, so we won't draw one. Uh, but this is the trend that ADX is saying is consistently growing. We're going up, going up, going up, going up. If we look at our plus DI, though, we can see that we have these little divots in the plus DI. That's because each time we have one of these bearish candles, our plus direction strength or weakens, it goes down. So we're, we no longer have that same strength in the positive direction. We're starting to experience that slight retracement right here. Overall, that's not affecting the trend. Our trend is still going completely bullish this whole time, just with those slight pullbacks, which aren't gonna be too much of an effect for our trading. What we'll really be looking for 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 exits and those starts of those pullbacks, those dangerous areas, is the ADX itself starting to uh, starting to decrease because that's our overall trend starting to go against us. I'm getting a little bit into the entries there, which we're going to talk about more here in a minute. 
uh, minus di, same thing as the plus di, just in the bearish direction. So as this minus di starts to go up and rise in strength, we see that the chart is starting to get these larger bearish candles, and we're on that really strong bearish trend going on right here. So we're back to my my crosshair. I'm sorry, my cursor. So let's let's look at a few different uh, sort of entry methods for the ADX. The two primary ones, or I'm sorry, there's three, three primary entries really. Uh, the first one is, oops, it's around 20, around 40, and around 50. And I'm a little off on those, uh, those lines there, but you know, they're, they're roughly on the right idea, so we'll sort of just use those as a, a basis. Uh, typically, you'd want that bottom one around 20, 25, this one here around, you know, around 40-ish, uh, and then around 50 for that upper line there. And so what these three lines are signifying is the difference in the, in the trend. And let's actually take this off right here. Take that line off, and this one too. If I can click on it, there we go. Take both of these lines off. And so what these are really signifying is the four different zones of the trend. And so here below this 20 line is really signifying an extremely weak or really no trend at all. And so we can sort of see that, switch back to the crosshair so we can look at the chart at the same time as down here. Right around this area, from right here all the way to right here, uh, both of these DIs are in that below that 20 level. And so that's consolidation as we can see on the chart. And so we don't really have a specific trend going on. We're going sideways, not bullish, not bearish, which is what the ADX is keying us into. So little to no trend at all. Here we have a weak trend. We're starting to really sort of develop a trend. Uh, if we go here, bearish side, you know, we start developing that bearish trend. As you can see, it's a pretty decent trend. Uh, we've got the whipsaw right here. Have a few wicks going on. It's not the strongest, but it's a good trend going on. Uh, then we have... From that, from that, I'm sorry, 40 to the 50 range, we have a, a strong trend. So we're, we're going pretty strong. A good place here to be in a trade for whichever one is the dominant DI. And then really above that 50 is, is just sort of an extremely strong trend. Uh, you won't always see it divided up into the four zones like that. You'll usually see, you'll see three to four typically if this is the way you're trading. You'll have weak, uh, weak moderate, strong, or you'll have that weak, it's there, you know, stronger and then extremely strong trends. Uh, so it really just sort of depends on, on who you're sort of discussing it with. Um, but if we go in, so these, these levels right here, the crossovers with these levels are the first entry which we'll discuss. So you won't really be too concerned with this lower one. Uh, you can, you can enter these trades as you can see that sometimes gives you good trades. Uh, once again, the GDP, uh, GBP and ZD. One of the reasons I choose that is because it does have these really strong trends. Uh, so even just crossing above that 20 level, we do have those significant trends. But so this would be sell right here as our minus DI crosses above, buy over here as our plus DI crosses above. Um, and as we start to cross above these levels, as we're moving up in the ADX, we're going higher and higher. We'll start crossing over those levels that are higher and higher. And that trend is just strengthening and reinforcing the fact that we should be in that trade. So that's our primary entry there. Let's go ahead, we'll take these off. So our secondary and tertiary entries are both gonna be crossovers that occur within the ADX. Uh, the first one that we'll talk about is just a DI-DI crossover. So when our positive direction starts becoming stronger than the negative direction and vice versa. And then the tertiary, which is probably one of our strongest entries for the ADX, I will talk about when we have one of those DIs cross over the ADX. But going to these DI, DI crossovers, areas like this right here, we can see that that trend is switching directions. Minus DI becomes stronger than the plus DI. We go ahead into our cell. That happens right here. And we go down, capture about that 107 pips in about eight hours, those two candles right there. We get that plus DI crossing over the minus DI. That happens right here. We go ahead, measure that one out, and we capture about 80 pips, same two hour time, or I'm sorry, same two candle, eight hour time span that we were talking about right there before. Uh, so the reason that these are sort of our entries is 
just sort of like we like we just said your your positive direction is becoming stronger than that negative direction you're going more bullish than bearish and you're reversing that trend the thing to be cautious of with these is if you look at areas sort of like over here in this vicinity right here we have a lot of weaving going back and forth with the plus di and the minus di and that weaving occurs during consolidations. We have it sort of happening over here. Not so much because we came off of a really strong trend. Uh, but a lot of consolidations, you'll see that weaving back and forth. And it also happens during slight retracements. If you're not in an extremely strong trend and you have that crossover happen, you're starting to get the, uh, that slight pullback. It's, you're not in a strong trend, so the pullback's not that strong. And so really it just becomes sort of a weaker signal at that point. So if you are using these, you will want them to occur sort of higher up on the ADX, uh, sort of pulling in that, those lines, that line aspect we were just talking about. And so you want it to be happening above that 20, 25 area, letting you know that that crossover, you are crossing into a, at, at least it's there sort of trend on the ADX. It's not happening below that 20 level where there could be no trends at all. And so as, as long as it's happening above that 20, 25 area, we have that trend present, and that's what we're going to be trading off of. Uh, excuse me. Um, tertiary entry is going to be these areas right here where we have one of the DIs cross over the ADX. So what these areas are signifying is if we think of the ADX as the overall trend, here, yeah, overall trend is growing stronger, overall trend is growing weaker, growing stronger, growing weaker. And then these are just the unidirectional trend since each bearish candle is going to take a hit away from the plus DI. Uh, each bearish, I'm sorry, each bullish candle is going to take away a hit from the minus DI. Each bearish candle is going to take away a hit from the plus DI. These are our unidirectional trends. And so when we get an area like right here where just the strict directional trend grows so fast that it exceeds the overall trend, it's completely basically not considering the previous uh, bullish candles in this case since we're on the bearish trend. And so we go ahead, if we enter that cell right when we get that crossover, right there we bank about 250 pips, uh, all within that, that uh, what is that, 12 hour time frame, anywhere between 8 and 12 depending on how fast that, uh, that first drop happened right here on this candle. Uh, but we go ahead and we can capture that very rapid movement going down. Uh, same thing for the bullish side. If we go look right here, we get that, that plus DI crossing over the ADX. And this one's not the, not the strongest. It goes, goes up about 50 pips in an hour. Um, but a lot of times when you start to get these crossovers, and once again, this is, this is mainly because of the pair we're looking at and the volatility in it. it uh, the movements, they can occur so fast that they're, they may show as, you know, really fast on the indicators, but just reading the sort of price action, not, not so much so. But uh, once we get any of these crossovers with the plus DI, here's a good one right here. Uh, missed this one at first. So we enter that buy right there, go up, trade it, and then we end up making about 400 and uh, 400 some pips, all within the course of about 24 hours, all within one trade. And so those are our primary entries. Looking at those levels, about 20, around 40, around 50 for our medium, strong, extremely strong, no trend at all. Uh, looking at those DI, DI crossovers, our bullish trend is exceeding the bearish trend. And then also the uh, DI crossing over the ADX. Our unidirectional trend exceeds the overall trend. It just discounts those previous candles going the opposite direction of how we're going. And so we get that strong momentum burst in the class. Um, you know, this is, if, if you do take that uh, momentum burst class that, you know, Apiary has, I'm actually the teacher for that. And we do actually use the, uh, the ADX sometimes in that class for the, this exact reason, is we can get these really strong indications that we have that breakout starting to occur. Um, a lot of times, you know, you will have that big movement happen before, so you may not catch the whole candle necessarily, but you'll catch that latter 127 pips in less than one candle, about two hours, making almost, you know, 150 pips, not, not bad off of one trade there. And so those are our three entries. Uh, exits, a little bit more straightforward. Uh, if we go, there we go, we go back down. Uh, exits, we don't really need to concern ourselves with those lines on the ADX because we're not going to be looking to cross over those lines because by the time that trend is going down and transitions from strong to weak, we've already lost a lot of our profit 
If not, we're reversing the direction of the trend already. We're going to see that ADX start going up again, and we'll miss that exit totally. And so the exits will mostly just be based off of when we start forming these pivot points. If I switch from my crosshair to a circle, it's these points right here where we have those highs forming. We start going down towards those lows. So if we use this trend here, it happens right around this area. Uh, a few different areas there that which we, which we see it. Let me just adjust this and move it up a little bit. And so what these areas are showing us is that our, so here's that really strong trend. We crossed over the ADX here. And so we're going up. Yes, yeah, slight, slight downward movement, but we're still going up. We're still above the overall trend. So we're still growing in strength. And then the ADX wise right here, we start to flatten out. We start to go sideways. And so our overall trend is it, it's reached its pinnacle. It's we're, we're not, uh, we're not continuing that strength anymore. So that sort of sideways motion uh, or, or bearish motion like we see over here on that ADX is really our, our first indication to get out of the trade. Uh, at that point, we've, we've reached the course of the trend. Uh, we start weakening on the trend. And there will be times like right here where we do have that slight weakening and then going up. Uh, and we may make, what is that, if we go from here to here, may make 20 extra pips. But the duration in which we're making those 20 extra pips is a lot longer period than just the duration we were originally in that trade. So once we start seeing that ADX decrease, we know that the trend we're in is, is pretty much done. It's starting to weaken. It may, it may come back with a little bit of a vengeance. We may see it spike down and then spike back up. Uh, sort of like, mm, let's see, a little bit of the uh, action right here. Um, you know, we're, we're going, well, this is still looking at that bearish trend, though. Uh, it's like we don't actually really have any instances of that happening right here. We're moving, moving. So we get a little bit of that movement right here, actually. So when that bearish trend, bearish trend sort of finishes, we really start slowing down on that bearish trend. And then we, we pick up a bit. We have that, that bearish continuation happen right here. And so we end up, you know, we go... Close out right here, slight retracement, could have closed out for a little bit more. But once again, looking at how many pips did we make off of staying in versus how many did we risk staying in, it's really not worth the not worth the reward for that risk right there. And so once we start seeing that ADX head downwards, then we'll go ahead and exit the trend. Uh, that one becomes most important if we do these DI ADX crossovers. Uh, if we're really just banking off of these uh, DI, DI crossovers intermittently throughout here. Uh, we won't be focusing so much so on that ADX because that ADX is going to be sort of fluctuating a lot and we'll more so be focusing on which way is the, the DI going. And so if that DI starts to decrease, we're in the buy, DI starts going down, just go ahead, exit out of that trade uh, because you're, you're pretty much at the, at the end of that, uh, that small sort of scalp usually. Um, Rel scalp as a relative term for a few candles. Uh, so on this four hour, you know, the scalp may be, you know, 12 hours, you know, three candles, but sort of use that term a little relativistically. But uh, yeah, once we start seeing that DI head down though, go ahead, close out of the trade. Uh, so that's really it for the, uh, the ADX there. It's trend strength, you have a strong trend or a weak trend, which way is the trend going? Um, uses that EMA, so it's reactive to the price movement going on. Um, and yeah, so we are sort of using that uh, EMA in the calculation there, seeing what the price is doing. So uh, as for as for the ADX, that's that's pretty much the uh, the bulk of it there. Um, you know, I mean, hopefully this you know indicator can help you guys in your trading. Uh, once again, if you have questions, feel free to type them out. We have someone I'm not even sure who it is honestly upstairs answering those questions um, but go ahead type those out they'll uh, they'll be answering those here um, but otherwise if you I mean you know if you like our YouTube lives you know like uh, like the video subscribe to us uh, we do these same videos every Wednesday we also on Tuesdays now uh, release sort of five minute snippets of these types of indicator videos talking about different indicator calculations and entries too uh, so you'll get notified when we put those out so if you, if you like these videos, you like the Apiary Funds, uh, please feel free to like and subscribe. And if you want to follow Sean with his, uh, 
with his efforts in Florida. I think he's leaving tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, go go ahead and uh, go to traderonthestreet.com slash give back and you can uh, you can see the progress that Sean is making there. Uh, so thank you guys for joining us for this live today and have yourselves a great day and happy trading.